I myself am a um, pediatric surgeon, um, very much interested in doing basic research on biliary atresia, um, and we um, were happy here to closely collaborate with um, between um, pediatric surgery and, and pediatric hepatology, and um, we're setting up this um, registry together with Hamburg, together with the um, biliary atresia working group, um, Björn Fischler, um, Omid Madari Zanjani, uh, Klaus, before he um, left into retirement. Um, so I'm speaking for them um, and especially um, um, for Eckert as well. Um, we were the um, team setting up this um, registry. Um, and I would like to start sharing just a, just one slide um, to give you a wrap up about the registry. Um, your this should be an interactive um, um, tutorial or seminar, so you're allowed to um, ask questions at any time. Um, please don't hesitate. And after me, um, Felix will take over and guide you through the um, registry um, with an example patient and just all the um, all the um, single steps you um, would take and um, putting in one patient. Okay, I think everybody should see my screen now. Is that correct? Great. Um, so um, the URN rare liver and biliary atresia registry officially launched this January. Um, we um, discussed it for actually many years and many um, many meetings before that we need a, a registry um, to collect data on biliary atresia, not nationwide but internationally and um, especially a prospective registry because many of the answers that we that we look for in, in treatment of biliary atresia, they can only be answered in a prospective registry, um, which is why um, we have two major objectives of this registry. And one objective is to systematically collect um, management issues for biliary atresia in Europe and beyond. Um, I already saw we have um, um, also um, colleagues from South Africa here, so we are, um, especially keen on the information and the, the management issues um, comparing um, continents, comparing countries in Europe. Um, and I think that could be the strength of this registry. Um, of course, we are also very much interested in evaluating novel biomarkers. There have been a couple of papers, I'm sure you all know of them, evaluating new biomarkers, MMP7, um, for example, which um, are tested in a few centers, not in many centers, but um, the, the outlook at least of this registry is to also include evaluation of novel um, diagnostic and also therapeutic um, substances. Um, especially the meetings this year told us one thing, um, the novel therapies um, for cholestatic diseases are um, used in, in many studies or have been used in many studies which have been presented in Vienna, for example, this year. Um, but also for biliary atresia, we will get more information on, on how, those, um, how those therapies work. And this is also one of the major objectives to find out how those novel therapies work and what is the effect of them. Um, so far, we have 30 patients enrolled um, from three centers. Um, but from the information um, that um, I received um, of many of you, and we have many more centers interested. Um, in, in total, it should be about 20 centers more interested. Um, and for most of them, actually, the DTAs are in progress or you can already put in um, data. Um, DTAs, um, I have to say, is the, the most time-consuming um, thing. So... Um, until the legal department um, had, um, has the data transfer agreements through with the uh, with Hamburg with the Hamburg team, this is the most time-consuming um, part of the registry. After that, at least we designed it to have it really simple for you to put in data. But we know and apologize that is time-consuming, but we'll try to be very helpful. At least um, um, all of all, all of our um, steering team here um, to make it as comfortable for you as possible. 
Um, so from the first experiences and um, putting in one patient, um, I can tell you um, if you go through um, putting in one patient for the initial diagnosis, it takes about one hour, but only for first time users. And it always depends on how many data you want to put in. Uh, I will come to that later, but we have um, core data and we have extended data, uh, which is marked. Um, Felix will, will show you that. And um, if you just put in core data, you will actually be faster than that. Um, the entries um, um, so far are also allowed from January 2022. So um, we have a retrospective part. Um, but also want to collect them um, prospectively from now on. But so far, so we get also a little bit more patients actually in, and um, still patients from January 2022 can be put into the okay. registry. So um, we want to have a ex inclusive um, inclusive registry. Of course, we will we will start and get um, most ERN centers in, and especially for those who have the data transfer agreement already um, processed, um, it would be very good if those centers would put in the patients and the prospective character of this registry is really important for us. The CRF, um, as you will see in a minute or already know, is on Castor, and we designed it as simple as possible and as detailed as necessary. And this is what I already mentioned, the core data versus the extended data set. The core data is always marked with an um, orange, orange sign, and this orange sign is actually um, easy to detect, and this is the core data, and it's actually um, pretty minimal. Uh, but if you're interested, for example, in cardiology and biliary atresia and want to put in more data, which you can obviously also use for yourself, and um, you're able to do that. Um, so um, everything is possible, but um, there is a minimal data set which should be put in. And of course, initial diagnosis has to be put in, and then the three months, the six months, and the one year entry um, is um, minimum if you want to get the money for one completed patient. Um, we um, have well, uh, a well-funded registry from unrestricted grants, and so far we can give you 200 euros um, for each completed patient um, year. Um, like I already said, you retain the data rights. You put it in, and we will ask you uh, for permission for every um, publication. Uh, we plan to do an interim report after one year and present it on um, the conferences, you all know. We will send newsletters all six months, what is what is the, um, the current status of the registry, and we would like to, um, to give a final report after three, three years. But of course, if you're interested in a specific um, part, a specific diagnostic feature of biliary atresia, you can use your data or ask whether um, more um, more data can be used for a um, publication. Um, so that would be my uh, my wrap up of the registry. Um, is there any question already uh, for me now, or do you all want to hear Felix getting through the registry? So um, my name is Felix. I'm the data manager um, of our liver. Um, I'm the one who put together this registry and um, I'm going to introduce you to it right now. Um, the first thing you need, of course, to enter data is, a, is a, an account. And we have to invite you to, to the system. So we need your email address for that. And then you have to uh, follow the link in the email and create an account. Always make sure to select the Netherlands up here because that's where we are hosted we're not in the united states or anything we are inside the eu in the netherlands um then you can just enter your email and your password and you're in the first view you will get is an overview of all the registries you are invited to um right now in our liver we, we have three registries the autoimmune liver disease lab, um, registry, the vascular liver disease registry, and EBA, which is the one I'm talking about today. It's a biliary atresia registry. And you can just enter it by 
clicking clicking it obviously and for those who have worked with um, electronic data captures before this won't be too much of a of a stretch and it will be even easier if you are familiar with Castor or any other R liver registry. So we the data structured in participants, repeating data and surveys. Participant, each participant is of course a patient, a case. For for each patient, there might be some um, repeating exams that might occur. They are stored in repeating data, and surveys are. Um, uh, questionnaires for the patient directly for patient reported outcomes which will um, play a role later on when once we have got our mobile application up and running but right now if you have a new patient of course you have to create a participant you just click new um you select your you select your um, your center. I will go for test set this time. The participant ID is automatically created. And here you can also um, add a participant email. This is not necessary. It's only, it's only um, useful if you want to use the app, which hasn't been connected to this specific registry yet. But if you want to to um, conduct some studies via app, you, you will need to enter an, an email address and you need a specific um, contact consent from the patient that you are allowed to use the, the email. The people who, are, who can see the email are only the ones entering it. So if I enter an email, nobody else from any other center can see it. It's um, protected. So maybe, Felix, if I can add to that, I, I really yes. want to motivate all the centers to try to enter an email address. That will be the opportunity for us also to communicate with the patients or their families and it will be of utmost value i think for the industry partners um, involved in funding those activities like ebar um, has been funded from industry so i think we should try to do that if possible thanks okay. so i'm the, the one the the Center is the only one who can see the email address. It's specifically um, encoded, so, so I, as a data manager, too, can't see it. All the other data I can see if I want, but I cannot, cannot see any um, email addresses you enter there. It's, it's very well protected. Um, yeah, once you, you've created your, um, your participant, you just go through the whole ECRF from top to bottom. You just give a few informations, information. Whatever, uh, if you choose specific answers, um, additional question might might occur, and you just go through it. Um, as you can see, some of the uh, some of the fields are printed with bold letters, and some are not. The ones printed boldly are the required fields, the core data set. Um, Christoph just talked about, and they are always coded with with a traffic light symbol if it's if it's not green there's something to do if i enter it will turn green and this uh, field has is been filled you can just go on and enter a date if this is wrong we'll tell you so the for data protection reasons we cannot um store the date to the to the day exact we have to take the month and this is how I check it. And once you you fill in all the necessary data, just gonna go through that. The whole thing on the left will turn green. And there's another light up here. And if this whole phase is finished, it will also turn green. So it will always guide you through your data and tell you where there's work to be done. In the participant list, it's there's also a progress bar, and you can sort by progress. So you can um, Put the ones with the least data on top and work yourself through your own data whenever you want. Yes. Okay. Can okay. I data protect? Yes. Can I just mention one thing? Um, j just uh, for uh, to make to make sure. And um, Felix is now seeing all um, the, uh, the the patients put in because he's data manager you yourself will only see your patients uh, from your uh, from your side 
That is correct. So I can see it all, it all but you will, all, if you're from tub tubing, you will all only see these ones. This is what you see if you're from tubing, it, for instance. Only your own data. You cannot see anybody else's data. Unless there's a specific agreement, but um, there's none for this registry. Yes, okay. So for data protection reasons, we also cannot store the exact birth date in this registry. We do it in other registries where there are, we, have, uh, we, we deal with adult patients, but we cannot do it here because it's only a few weeks after birth, they already need, need treatment. So instead, we, um, we uh, capture the date of the first symptoms and enter the age in weeks from there. I'm not sure if these values are sensible, but I'm just entering them. And from there, the registry will calculate additional uh, the age by itself. For instance, if you have, um, let's go here. Somewhere else. Okay, please, thank you. If you have an abdom abdominal in an ultrasound one month later in February, it will calculate the age in months, and once it's over 12 months, it will start giving you years as well. So this is a, the, the base, the basis will always, it will always approximate the age from the age it had, the, the patient had at, at first symptoms on the cell. And you just click yourself through, as I told you before, and sometimes it's necessary to, to add additional um, data sheets. For instance, if you have pre and perinatal data available, it will give you a button to create a new sheet, which is then a repeating data sheet, which you can name however you like. This is not, it's not mandatory, the name that's given. Um, you can name, name it, for instance, or you can put, put the pseudonym in there, whatever you like, whatever suits you best and gives you the best overview. Do whatever you want. And then you have to, again, to um, fill out all the data that is presented to you. You can always leave a um, repeating data sheet and we'll have an overview of all the repeating data forms that have been filled out yet for this patient by pres um, pressing repeating data on the side. And here you can um, see all the sheets that have been entered yet. And um, sorry, go back. So, yeah, we'll just go on like that. Uh, just there was a calliope procedure. There's a moderator. There was liver transplantation. And um, if you want to provide more data, which is always welcome, you can um, add it in additional reports. It will give you a few options for instance the follow-up which as far as i understood christoph should be added three months six months and 12 months after diagnosis you edit right here and you follow up report yeah. uh, changes in treatment can be reported here and any additional additional um, exam or event that can occur can also be added here just by pressing add and start entering data. And so on and so forth. Yeah. When there are certain endpoints for the study, when all one of them occurs, let's, let's um, simulate this. We have an event. Yeah. Got an event. The patient unfortunately died. Then it will tell you to um, fill out the end of study section in the main document. You will always find it in the baseline in the participant data, not in the repeating data sheet. Just go back to visits and this is where your study ends. Where you can then uh, tell us what happened, when it happened and Okay, that's a bit too far in the future. And how it happened. And once this set bit has been filled out, there there's no more data expected from you for this patient. Yes. And if if um, there are different um, reasons why a 
the patient can leave the study, for instance, the consent might be withdrawn. It might be the case that a patient then asks you to delete all their data. If that happens, you should contact us and we will take care of it because you cannot directly de delete um, data or in, an, in a running study. That's forbidden by Castor itself. I have to clear all the data and then archive it. So it's no longer available and we are in line with data protection regulations. Yeah, that's it. And if there are any more questions, I'm happy to answer. Can I maybe just, just add one information? Um, for example, some of you will have um, patients, treating patients, especially if you're a liver transplant center, um, who had uh, the CSI procedure somewhere else, um, which is the case for um, at least one patient of us, for example. Um, so far, um, we cannot enter this, that the CSI procedure has been done externally. We already noted it. And we will um, we will um, change it in the next update of the registry. So for you, if you if you notice any any problem, any any bug or whatever, you can just give us um, an email um, um, through the contact emails or directly contact one of us, and we will um, take care that this um, problem or this bug um, will be handled. So, um, Philip has a question, I think. Hi, um, sorry, I'm, I came a little bit late, and maybe you already talked about that. Is it a strict um, prospective registry, or uh, can we also um, um, include patients in a, in a retrospective manner? So, um, we will go prospective from now on, but it is allowed to put in patients um, from Janu January 2022 on. So um, the CASI procedure has to be done at um, the earliest point in January 2022. Uh, and these patients can be put in, um, patients um, treated before or who had the CASI procedures six years before and now have the liver transplantation, for example, they cannot be put in. Mm. Um, and obviously, if the patients do not have a liver transplantation, just a short um, further add-on, you should just not fill out the liver transplantation point. And also, if they have the liver transplantation saying one year after CASI procedure, that's the time point where you should uh, fill out liver transplantation um, 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 set. Right, thanks. There's one more thing I forgot to mention. Which is extremely important. If you have a, if you have a required data field, a core data field, and you cannot fill it out, for instance, the CASI procedure was performed but not at your center, and you cannot fill out all these um, fields. What you should do instead, so you won't get a reminder of missing data fields um, every three months, uh, you should mark them as you they're missing. So this will let us know that this data point cannot be acquired. And just say the reason, save it, and then it will no longer be required and it's turned green now. But only do this for, for these um, data fields, for the required one, not for the not required ones, please. Oh, and also I just saw um, for the CASI procedure, we capture the age in days, but we do not capture a date because this is too specific, this measurement. So we know the age at which it occurred, but not where in the time the time uh, frame it happened. Okay, any other uh, questions from you guys? for registry, putting in data, or specific to Castor. I don't see any, any hands waving. 
so um like i said um feel free to contact to contact us um especially if, if problems arise but also if you just have uh, short questions most of them um, can be answered easily um some of the some of the centers um um some of the two centers other than than us who were and put in data actually we're using this and just sending um sending an email um to me and it was um always a question really easy to ask and i try to um always be fast and um and felix is especially important for more technical questions um but we'll try to to help you as um, um as soon as possible and as detailed as possible um just um send an email and we'll happy to to help you there. Um, okay, um, we will, um, as we recorded this um, this tutorial, we will um, send it um, by email to all of you guys and also to the to the um, other invited um, centers. Um, but um, for those of you who didn't start putting in data, um, I, I'm sure some of some questions will will arise, and and we um, can be open to to give uh, further.